thousand year voyage guided by compassion. By this point, you're probably already familiar with this grab attack of the final DLC boss. Radan grabs you, Mikola puts a charm on you, which is indicated by the symbol above your head. And if you get grabbed again, you get fully charmed, which implies that you have now lost your free will and are essentially a servant of Mikola, which is also indicated by the heart stolen message. In gameplay terms, this is simply equivalent to dying, since you can continue playing without your free will. That limitation, however, does not apply to your summons. Your summons could turn against you when fully charmed. And that could have been very neat, but we can't have that. So instead, the summons just die and disappear. But never mind the summons. What if your character could actually continue the journey while being under Mikola's influence? What if getting charmed simply meant that you can no longer oppose Mikola? And maybe that could lock you into a specific ending? A new ending, perhaps, exclusive to the DLC? And until you break free from Mikola's influence, maybe you could no longer challenge the boss fight again? That would have been neat, but we can't have that. And the way you would get out of that state is the same way you currently remove the charm, by finding the Great Rune of Mikola, which isn't actually a Great Rune from a game mechanic perspective, and instead a reusable item that simply allows you to clear the charm debuff after the first grab. But what if there was another way to clear that debuff? With a certain incantation, perhaps? One that was described to dispel special effects. I am, of course, talking about Law of Regression, because if you could dispel the charm by using this incantation, it would have been kind of neat. But we can't have that, so it doesn't work. And the Great Rune remains as the only way to clear it. Which is fine, but to be honest, it really should have been a proper Great Rune from game mechanics standpoint, that you could equip and activate. And it could grant you complete immunity to the charm, which in turn could trigger some special dialogue from Mikola, <laughs> which would have been very neat, but we can't have that. The only thing you can have is Prime Radan. You liked the Radan, right? You remember Radan? He was riding a horse. Now he's not riding a horse. Now there is a twink riding him instead. But it is Prime Radan, right? No, he's not. He's a brain dead zombie, just like the last time. Except last time he was scarlet rotted by Melania, and this one is brain rotted by Mikola. It is an abomination, both in terms of gameplay and how clinically insane the moveset is. And actually, according to the lore, because it's Sardan's soul implanted into Moog's body. And the only way that comes through to gameplay is one blood flame attack. You might think that since this is Moog's body, it would be a very clever idea to try and stun him with Moog's shackle, which would have been neat, but we can't have that, so it doesn't work. The second phase of this fight really should have been Mikola's necromancy backfiring horribly and Radan transforming back into an omen to maybe indicate that Mikola's plan was a horrible idea, but instead we just get a Radan puppet. Just a puppet. Nothing more. So you get all the tasteless cynicism of you like this boss? What if you fought him in his prime? With none of the benefit of actually using this opportunity to develop his character. Because why would you care about this character? Shut up and enjoy the light show. 